one, two, three, testing one, two, three. I can't see it, but leaving the camera there, it's gonna get wet. Morning, bit of a late start for me. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're gonna do a bit of bream fishing today. Um, bit late getting here, it's, it's half eight. Got the shits from hell. I'll cut that bit out. Got the shits from hell. <laughs> oh, oh Jesus, what they had. Anyway, um, I've been fishing this venue now for a couple of months. Hoping to get an eight pound bream and it hasn't surfaced. Uh, I missed them by a couple of weeks, I think. I think they came into the area. Um, where I was fishing, which is quite shallow to spawn, and uh, they've moved out of the area. So I'm opting for a short range chuck today. I'm going to be fishing roughly around about 15 foot. There's 30 foot of water in front of me, but I'm going to fish on the bank at short range. Smelly baits, spessy rods. Um, I'm not going to keep firing bait because on the feed it's great. You can pile in, pile in, pile in, pile in, keep, keep the, the, the swim going, but you're catching a lot of skin on roach as well and, and amongst them and um which is good which is really good uh but on today i just wanted to have a chill out day so i'm just going to uh sit on baits and wait um really simple day um i'm gonna get the gear ready i'll catch you in a minute or later so the main baits i'm using today casters it's only a pint here you don't need any more than that and one small tin of corn. There is another small tin, but we really need a lot of that. So what I'm going to do, before you start, get some water on that bait. Stop it becoming buoyant. And it'll keep it fresh, because it's cool. Okay, don't forget that, it's most important. Uh, Shameful anglers, what they do is, uh, look, tins of corn and all the rest of it, bring the beer, dump it in the what's name, the car's maybe a few yards away, leave all the fucking empties there, like, and the, the, the plastic bags and shit, um, the crisp packets and... crisp packets and shit in the bushes, you know what? They're a shameful bunch. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I think it's a generation thing to tell you the truth. I really do. Um, my viewers tend to be of a certain age and they don't do that sort of thing. Um, I hope you don't do that sort of thing. If you do, you're a shameful little git. You're most probably a young little whippersnapper, right? Who's going bald. You know what? Before you even start the session, pellet. I'm just using the dynamite cart pellets, two milli ones. So just uh, consistent, nothing flash, nothing fancy, don't even need it here. Don't need to make too much of it up. Leftovers from the last session. Just cover them, just so they're covered. I See that? I'm not sure if you can see that, just so it's covered. So that water get absorbed in. Right, the ground bait I'm using today. Worm soil. Yeah, that is it. Nothing else, just worm soil. So we're gonna put a big chunk in there and let's we'll load that out in big balls in a bit. Well, that might do it now. Worm soil in there. Keep the rest of it in the bag, keep it moist. Some of it.
I've got more out, it's pretty potent. Uh, rods we're using today, let's get this in focus. Right, the rods I'm using, I'm only for moving on. The rods I'm using today are Drennan Specialist, one and a quarter test curve, 12 foot long, old school. Uh, Shimano 5010s with 0.2 line on, which is more than strong enough. And uh, what we're using on this one, 28 gram uh, groom hybrid feeder, elasticated with the black elastic on. And everybody will know when you're setting these little monkeys up, you put your little stopper on like that. Right. All I do is I stick myself a big healthy loop on, double knot that's it, yeah, that big, big loop. Cut that tack off, big loop. <laughs> Push the cap up, done, all done. And then what I do there? <laughs> Give me a nice big clamp. Mm -hmm -hmm. Size tens, two M ones. use these heavy ones these are they're not these are qm ones size 12s with bayonets on pant out 10 pound line on them they're strong you can trust them and oof, i don't even know what i'm going to feed it Only a four inch hook length. That's on. Make sure it can pivot, switch it can. I'm going to use these for the bigger bream at the moment, which are the 10mm ringers, wafters, they're just all sorts, they're just chocolate orange jobs, so we'll go straight for a red one, something that stands out, and push the bayonet straight in, and there we go. All set up, ready to go. Um, stick some bait on that. Pull it out. See you in a minute. Hybrid feeder, half loaded with pellet, half loaded with soil. Got a short cut on the marker. And we're in. No clips, zero clips today. Right, this rig is a standard heli rig and um, I'll show you how the components that I use to set this up there's absolutely no knots on the line whatsoever the only knots that's going to be on this line is at the feeder which is at the very very end 
so there's no weak points or anything like that we're using a reasonably heavy feeder which is going to be in this case I, want, I just want to put bait down so it'll be a window feeder which is an ideal for this I can put whatever I want in it I can put my caster in it I can put worm in it I can put pellet in it I can put corn in it whatever I want so the first components to go in and I use these start using these quite largely because the value for money you get a lot from um, I, I use these little feeder stops so you need to put one of these on the line first which are quite simple you can get in the packet, you can get in the packet. so you just pop one feeder stop on now, I've been using this rig for a while now with shock leaders and everything on, on the feeder rigs and it's bang on enough to get my glasses on for this one so morning what we've got here the feeder stops that lens on ones these are large ones they've got little loops on the end just pop one through lose the line like Gary does you have to discard the end of your line after you've popped them through because it does get damaged with little wires so you just pop one onto the end of the line like so and slide it up nicely and then you can get these little heli, slits, heli uh, clips I get these off Wish you can buy Matrix ones, Guru ones if you don't get many for your money so these wish ones you get about 30 for about two quid so they're a bit cheaper um, I'm using the medium ones at the moment but there's a possible it might go up to the large um, a little swivel and they've got a little yeah little swivel on them and they've got a little push down thing anyway slide the swivel on So the swivel's on, and then put another stop on. Oops, lost them. And there you go. And the swivel, then with a little uh, quick attachment, is actually trapped between the two beads and can spin. Duncan Charman was the guy who put me on them. Uh, Duncan's a clever bloke, and you can buy you can buy the ready heli rigs, you know, ready set up, and they have like a, a sleeve on them, you know, for your for your rig. But I found that the, the anti tangle sleeve is actually more of a hindrance. I, I, it was uh, it was good. It works for Duncan like, but for the conditions that I'm working in, um, this is adequate. Right, once that's done, I use then some uh, little snap links, what they use for, for traces, for pike fishing, for clipping my, my feeders on and off, because uh, they're a lot bigger and I can see them and they're quicker to undo. So get these off which is well about 90 in a packet for about two quid if you can get them out of the packet come out of the packet so far, yes so just little snap link swivels so what you do then there's a little snap link swivel Slide the loop on the line. Give yourself plenty of line to work with. I'm going to trim that little bit of line off at the corner. And then what I do then is I spin it up as, as like a boom at the end, like a Twizzle boom, which just means twisting. Uh, 
once I've twizzled it up, I'll just tie it off with a couple of little overhead knots. Boom through twice in a little swivel. Once, twice. Make sure it's nice and strong. That's set up about four inches. Right. I'll take the tag end off, but I'll leave a little bit showing so the stock's got something to buckle up against. Right. Once that's set up, slide that down. And there we have it. Strong. No knots involved. Get yourself a feeder. Clip straight on, and then we just do the hook lens, and I'll show you the hook lens in a minute. Right, hook link will be more simple. What I'm going to do is get some 8 pound chloro Chop that up You end up with any bits of lime, what you're better off doing is just chopping it up into little chunks Right what I'm using today, I'm going to use the um, quorum specimen size tens. You get plenty of worm on. Uh, they're an eyed hook and they've got a microbarb on them. So uh, the carbon hook, big and strong. So we'll just get one of those out. In our time, knotless knot. which a lot of people do these days or um, whatever you want to do but not just not so like good so let's have one of those tie fresh every time but I'm not going to not just not this one I'll do it old school Make sure you come through on that angle of the hook because you want it to kick. Put the glasses on for this one. What I tend to do then is it's gone through, make myself a little loop. Give yourself plenty of line on this one. Make yourself a little loop. the loop and, and that and then I'm going to whip it down the shank many knots as you can get on it and then what I'll do then is I'll just pop that tag end through the loop get it pull it tight No, get on. Okay, so we've got a nice big kick on it. Now I'm going to start this rig off around about, I reckon about 8 inches, maybe a bit more, a tiny bit more. So I'm just going to put myself a nice little tight, tight loop on that, double knot on it.
fucking hole. And there we have it. So, got my hook then, 8 inches long, which I like, for green. Everything else will go shorter. And then, all you have to do then is pop that onto your heli rig, pull the rubber stopper down. And we're on. Kicked out, ready. Bait I'm using today's worm. There's no hair rigs or anything like that. Straightforward, get the worms on the hooks. I always tend to hook them on the head. Get a few worms on this hook. fishing First take on hybrid. Just got a bit of time to actually chill out and relax. Just put the rods in. I've just had a first in indication on the hybrid, which I'm really happy about. Uh, so that gives me extra options for the future. And I have actually tested it on this water hybrid on the first session I did here, and I had three big hybrids on it, one of them was about five pounds in weight, so um, that's good, but obviously the, the options, because they're not really into the fish meal really, um, is, do, do we'll actually take micropelli, I think it's basically if it's mixed in with other stuff, but using it with the soil, that's alright, but what I'm noticing on the swim at the moment is there's a few trout just turned up on the surface, fishing about 15 foot of water. I'm fishing negatively, I'm not casting out and casting out and casting out and trying to draw fishing. Uh, I've laid a bed of pellet, no ground bait. Uh, hopefully keep the skimmer and roach at bay and like I say, it's just trying to pick up one fish and I'm going to get a chance now. Whew, let's have a coffee. The cup's looking a bit mingy. I've got to wash it. I wonder if I get the shits. And uh, it's been great because um, we've had red hot record breaking weather for the last few weeks. Um, which is good for the river anglers because they can be able to get back out in the river and enjoy themselves. Catching their favourite species which I'm walking away from for a short while. Um, I want to target green and I want to target perch. Um, there's certain river stretches that I will fish. Um, 
them but they're out of the area so all that coffee shite oh must have washed that one oh that's hanging First fish, not very big, just a little skimmer by the looks of it. Let it go. First fish on the hybrid, so second chuck. Now we'll get her back out there. Nice little perch, tiny little, tiny one, tiny one on the worm. Mm -hmm. Gone, so I obviously didn't see that because I've been back to it. On the hybrid feeder, so you know. Weird. 
bloody alarm weren't working a minute ago, it's bloody working now. Too lively. So the hybrids are destroying uh, the worm already. Um, the worm's not not any green. Okay.
show you a nice bream. Good stamp bream. They're alright. Stamp with the milk minute. There we go. Nice little stamp of bream, but all coming to the hybrid feeder. So swapping both rods over to the hybrid. Wait, I've uh, put the hybrid feeder on the old one. The old one's still producing fish, and there's uh, a lot of fish there. There could be a slight difference in the depths, or oh, you're just not pulling up that tight up there, or intercepting the bait just on the right hand side, but they're not really slipped into that area. So, what I'm thinking of doing is tightening my line up on the right hand rod a few more yards to the right and shifting my marker on this one um, sort of like in a sweet swap between my old marker and the marker that the, the right rod's using now or just to move that one up a little bit further to the right and uh, it's gone again Tighten my left hand rod up a bit. Come off that old marker, man. It just wasn't producing it, was it? Maybe 30, 30, 30 yards, maybe 40 yards, maybe a little bit more, maybe to the left, and uh, that line wasn't producing. So the the other, the, the other line is. So just moved it up a tiny up and maybe a tiny up a little bit too much actually I wasn't comfortable I thought it was a little bit too close but he's staying in don't too many lines in the same area oh great fucking Freddy Fla Freddy flies trying to drink your coffee yeah it actually it's shite Ooh. Anyway, the whole point of me filming these films is for no reason but to uh, put things down so like a history sort of thing because I'm not good at writing a book or doing pictures or doing a fishing blog. So I missed out to a degree and my old man used to know a lot of the stories. My mum wouldn't, oh, my mum knew bonkers but my dad did and I tend to sort of like uh, I'll randomly do whatever or talk about whatever and I, I want to talk about when I used to work for a, a company called CE Pumps, Ryle and Pumps and still keep in touch with a lot of the lads who used to work there like Mark Crystal and a few of the, of the lads but um, there's a few characters like Justin Corby and Jimmy Fannon and uh, Paul and Steve Jones and uh, yeah we, the company was very prosperous and uh, they used to pay us really well they give us a lot of bonuses and like random bonuses for nothing and parties couple of one in the summer and one at Christmas as well and there's a lot of people who used to work there it used to be pretty pretty funny and uh, I was thinking about it the other day and I, I thought how much my dad would have thought it was hilarious like but uh, we used to go on Blackpool trips so we have like a, a summer shutdown 
two weeks and a lot of stuff there's one or two companies still doing it but not many and um, it'll all take you two weeks holiday at the same time of the year so, so the company would just shut for two weeks in like June or I think it was like June but um, before it had shut down what we do is um, we'd have like a, a club thing where we put out of our wages a week something like £1.50 or something out your wages for the whole year and uh, there will be like about 70 of us go to Blackpool on a coach and you set off on the coach at something like 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning you do a football card on, on, on the coach and all the rest of it and <laughs> you, what's the name you, you've got put a pound in there, 40 teams in or something, if you want it you've got 40 quid which you pay for your beer and um, this is like in the 1980s so a young lad in the 1980s or 16, 19, you don't go on the piss with all these lads in Blackpool and you start drinking like uh, at 9 o'clock because you turn up for your breakfast for 9 o'clock and they'll be ready for 10 and your breakfast were always in a pub so they always serve you a few beers so about it, before you even got to Blackpool, you were absolutely hammered. And had a good breakfast down your neck. And then you'd be in like all the, uh, the pubs and the strip bars and everything all day. And you'd be arsehole. But well, everybody used to go on these Blackpool trips, you know, like it didn't matter if you were a copper or um, a nurse, school teachers or people who just worked in factories like we did. There was a few notorious bars in Blackpool, like uh, the Foxhole and the, the Star and the Manchester. And I, and I forget this day. <laughs> You'd walk into most of the pubs, there's always like bouncers on the doors, like, and uh, you'd have a good crack with them because, you know just lads working the living so it's middle of the middle of the afternoon as well on a Saturday so you've had your fish and chips on the front you've had a few pints you're a bit pissed so all the lads seem to have t piled into this the Manchester pub like and uh, I just come in behind them and I got chatting to the bouncer and there was a queue all the way out of the door through the pub and it was, seemed to be a bit busy and a bit rowdy and everyone's going and all the rest of it. So I said to the bouncer, what's all, what's all the racket? He says, it's them bloody school teachers. He said, they're the bloody worst. He said, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of school teachers. And they weren't the best looking lasses either. But there were a couple of school teachers, you know, like butter wouldn't melt in the mouth. Sort of thing. And they've had a few beers. So I'm looking down, down like, and there's this queue, and there's some of the lads from our works are in this queue, and I thought, what's all, what's all this queue about? Anyway, I looked down the pub, and there's a couple of these uh, rowdy lasses that are on top of the table, with the tits out, screaming and shouting. I said, what's the queue for? He says, oh, that dirty one on the end there. I said, what about her? She said, well, she's giving them all blowjobs. Do you know what? And they're all giggling and laughing, all the old lads. And, and I look down and look at me old, <laughs> some oh, pretty nasty looking scrubber sucking cock in the middle of the Manchester pub. I couldn't stop fucking laughing. <coughs> Honest, butter wouldn't have melted in the mouth. This is what the school teachers are like. <laughs> anyway, we ended up in this uh, nightclub later on. And when you're pissed, you think, you, you know, I mean, you, you know everything. So we're in this nightclub, I think it was called the Sands at the time, and it was un under the tower, or ne next to the tower. I'm a young lad. Goes in this uh, club, and it's like a top topless waitresses everywhere. 
<laughs> I remember uh, er Erasure came on at the time. Obviously, the we all jumped up and started dancing. All the lads from Manchester. We looked around. It was only lads dancing on the floor. And you think, oh Jesus! Anyway, we got chatting, and they said, uh, "Are we staying in here?" I said, "No, no. The coach is going home at like uh, coach is going home at uh, twelve o'clock. We'd have to get going now because it was getting on a bit late." And we said. Uh, no, no, we'll be all right for another one. Did you want another pint sort of thing? So you, you get the rounds in, because we had loads of money. We, we, we were flush. So, uh, get the rounds in, then you get another round in. And then you sort of like lose track of what time it is and all the rest of it. And obviously nightclubs turf you out at bloody two o'clock in the morning. So anyway, um, Better get make our way back down to the coach park, but it's right at the bloody other end. It's at the south end, south end, like so. You, and we were at like the tower, which is like going north end. So it's like, oh, Jesus, we're getting walking now. Anyway, long, we were a bit of thick. Coach would have le left about an hour or two before. So we get to the coach park, and it's bloody empty. There's only one or two coaches there. But Jesus Christ, what we gonna do? You now he spots this uh, coach. It had Bolton written on it. Jump on the coach, Bolton, ask the lads, you know what I mean, they'll let us on. So I said to these lads, I said, um, you're alright, Bolton's not that far away from Manchester, are you alright to jump on? Yeah, 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 lads, and it was like a stag do. So we jump, jumped on to the coach, and there's some lasses outside, and they were saying to the lads, like, can we jump on as well, like, because we've missed our coach. So these lasses have got on. So... I'm on the coach and I, I thought, well, I nodded off. And it was a little, little bit of noise and it woke me up because I'm pissed up and I woke, woke up to a girl with her tits out sucking some guy's cock right in fucking front of me and all this jeering. And it was the girls that I, the, these lads from Bolton had got on the bloody coach. Like, I must have said to them, yeah, you can get on the coach lot as long as you get your tits out and uh, give us a blowjob. And they're pissed up, they're not asked. So anyway, they, they dumped us off in bloody Farmworth. It's bloody 12 miles away from bloody Stratford. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we started walking. And uh, we were walking towards Manchester Town Centre. Anyway, they dropped us off. It must have been about 4 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, um got to about half past five in the morning and we walk along this road and anyway this cop car pulls up what are you doing lads and he said well we're, we're walking back to man yeah jump in jump jump in car we'll, we'll take you up to bus station uh piccadilly so jumped on the in the cop car and he took us all the way up to piccadilly anyway it was a sunday because it was a Saturday we went in and the, the, the services were a lot less and we had to hang around for a bit. I, I got on the bus, I didn't get back till Stratford. Jesus Christ, it must have been 11 or 12 the next day. I was absolutely knackered, totally sobered up and my feet, oh man, they were sore. I don't know how many miles we walked. It was brilliant. And, and I love them days and I miss them days. It was funny, it was proper funny. All the lads from Rylands and CH top lads, proper bunch of lads and if any of the lads are out there cracking days mate anyway I'm going to go on with my fishing and I'll see you in them for a short while
shit this out for a hybrid. Sweeter. Beautiful cracking hybrid. Very slimy. Let's get it back. Yeah, a cracking hybrid that. A couple of pounds at least. Nice little roach, it's just took a, tw a 10 milli bait. <laughs>
And there's a hybrid. Right, that's part of the experiment. I know they'll take fish meal pellets, sort of plain ones. So, I'm thinking in the last couple of hours, what I'm going to do is I've just took the worm soil and I've just over infused it with some really, really, really strong fish meal um, ground baits. Really strong. Uh, with worm meal and castor meal and, and also chunky fish uh, Properly oversaturated. I've just made a, a fresh mix of some more pellets, but I've Really infused them with some really over-the-top powerful ones which are Supposedly shit hot well, I've, I've used them in the past and they're a little bit of a mess on the bream so uh, I'll let those soak, those pellets. So the first experiment is to load that top layer of uh, soil on top of the hybrid feeders, which has been working today. Which you don't, it won't stick to the feeder. What it'll do is it'll just drop a massive scent in the water, and um, there's an instant reaction to it. Whether it's the correct fish, I don't know, because at the moment the beam are, are, are quite a, a small size. So, let's see what happens. So it's gone right from the um, sweet mixes, which I've been doing for weeks, to uh, a really stinky fishy base sort of thing. Uh, now we have a savoury tooth or a sweet tooth. Sometimes in mix. A bit over the top the experimenting, but it's like I've had a good day. I would have usually got home at four o'clock, which is like half an hour ago. So actually pushing myself for an extra two hours and. Um, experimenting because it's a long way to come and experiment doing the same thing all day and if it goes wrong so there's nothing lost in the last couple of hours that uh, I've tickled around very weak mixes now I'm going ultra strong just to see then it'll tell might tell me whether or not it kills the swim or it's worth another experiment next time or it might switch on. So, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Alright, I'm going to pack up soon. Um, the experiment's paid off. I, I, it wasn't quite right at first, and the feeders weren't unloading properly. 
so the little additives here and there to thin everything out and the feeders are unloading correctly now so we are on the fish mail we are taking it uh, none of the really really big bream have turned up but we have been getting some bream we might leave it on for a little bit longer but if there's any cat shots after I say goodbye I'll put them on so stay, please, please stay right to the very end please subscribe um, it's free and carry on watching plenty of other films there to watch so just watch not all fishing some of them are fishing and a bit of piss taking in it um, I'm going to let this run out I'll catch you a lot later anymore and the big ones I'll switch the cameras on but there's a possible this is the end of the film see you later bye bye <laughs>